I found another old letter. You remember the last one that I read to you, Dear Lover, was from one of my ancestors on my father's side. <clears throat> my father's family was from Tennessee and Missouri, uh, whereas my mother's side uh, was British. My mother was a British citizen. And um, this letter is um, written to Mrs. Alice Brown, who was my great-great-grandmother. 39 Rodney Street, Liverpool, in a beautiful little embossed uh, envelope, embossed with the stamp duty. It's a lovely little um, pink postage, one penny uh, stamp with a little young Victoria in the corner. When I first looked at it, I thought this handwriting looked so careful and sort of young. I thought perhaps it was written by a young woman, but it turns out to have been written by a man. Just to give me a moment while Granny gets her spectacles on. Um, and it is dated Tuesday the 17th of December, 1895. While it was sent on February the 3rd, 1896, a few months later. Um, the return address is New Oriental Bank, 19 Old Broad Street, London. Dear Aunt, I am no gentleman, not I, no star bedizened thing. My father's filched no dignity by fawning on a king. I am no gentleman, not I, no, no, no. Our stout John Knox was none, and why should I be so? I cut out the beautiful song by Professor Blackie, of which the above is a sample from an ultra-respectable Penny Weekly about two years ago, and have pasted it in a book of favorite cuttings next to Robert Brow's similar poem. Now literary tastes of this sort meet with just as little sympathy among respectable middle-class educated people as among those who have not had the same stimulus to cover a certain carefully defined region of culture and the former class are much harder to convert. My intended never heard of Shakespeare, that is true. I asked her the question soon after getting your letter, but then I don't particularly want to hear any more of that author myself, at least not of his plays. The Novum Morganum cannot be read too often. And I think I can impose my own literary heresies much more easily on a mind which is almost blank than on one distorted to please the orthodox examiner. The only bit of classic poetry Annie ever has heard of, as far as I can find, is Milton's Christmas Hymn, which her pet vicar, with good taste, rare and astonishing for a cleric, has introduced into his services. The only middle-class girls I know anything of are my own sisters and my cousin Mab Gibb, and two cousins on my father's side in Huntingdonshire. And so far as I know, I disagree with all of them on every literary, social, political, moral, religious, or aesthetic question on which there can be two opinions. Disagreement is not the same as indifference or ignorance, but it is equally opposed to domestic comfort when it extends too widely. So I think if the middle class young ladies I know are fair samples, I should be making a greater mistake in marrying any of their class than in marrying a reasonably intelligent girl whom I can paint to my own color if she will take paint at all. My mother does not seem to disapprove of my engagement very keenly on second thoughts. Aunt Con does, but though Aunt Con has been very kind to me, she has so long and obviously regarded me as a dangerous and disreputable heretic and revolutionist whose conversation with her sons must be prevented whenever possible, that I am afraid I cannot help taking her opposition simply as a matter of course. It has been rather the fashion in the new Oriental Bank to marry Calcutta barmaids, Mauritius French circus riders, Japanese girl graduates, and other women more or less different in blood or caste from their usually Scotch husbands. One man who left the bank lately is reported to have solved the difficulty of getting a fresh situation by marrying a full-blooded negress who owned a fine vanilla plantation in the Seychelles an example I had thoughts of following, so I don't feel as if I had done anything very unusual in merely engaging myself to the pretty and rather housewifely eldest of a boat builder's eleven children. 
Take one of a bunch of sisters, said Benjamin Franklin, and I'm doing it with a vengeance. In point of fact, I began with an attachment to one of the younger sisters. But Leah, in this case, is at least as desirable as Rachel, so I did not oppose the gentle pressure put on me by Laban and his wife. I am sorry you recommend the French Sunday. I prefer the Puritan one. As long as it prevails, I am sure of a weekly holiday. People in a corresponding position in France only get half one and not always that. I took some part in a dispute on this subject in the Clarion a little time ago. I didn't think Liverpool was ahead of London in the way Birmingham and Glasgow are. But if you can't buy titbits on Sunday, Liverpool But if you can't buy titbits on Sunday, Liverpool undoubtedly is in at least one point ahead not only of the southeastern excrescence but even of the Midland one. I enclose the sums. Your affectionate nephew, Caldwell Harper. Not to put too fine a point on it, but as my husband said when I read him this letter, what a wank stain. Oh, also, he spelled Shakespeare wrong. Just saying. I was able to do some research into the ancestry um, and find this Caldwell Harper and I came across his petition for divorce, and the document read, uh, the title was Harper versus Harper and Constantinescu. Now, this, as I said, this letter was written in, on the December the 17th, 1895. It turns out he had actually married Annie Maria Hunt on the 11th. So he wrote this letter to his aunt after he had gotten married. And, um, the divorce uh, petition was in 1907. From 1906, uh, they had not been living together. It turns out that this Annie had not taken the color of Caldwell's paint at all, and had had an adulterous affair. Caldwell was a banker when he wrote this letter, a banker in London, but he became later the corporate secretary to a mining company called Vieille Montagne, a zinc mining company. And he had taken her and their two children, Rose and James, up to the north, further north uh, than Liverpool, to uh, Cumbria, to the offices of a zinc mine, where uh, there were a lot of um, foreign laborers in this mine, uh, among them one Vasily Constantinescu from Romania, with whom she not only had an affair, but also a baby. And then from 1906, she abandoned her husband, uh, her two children with Caldwell, and her baby with Vasily, and fled with uh, Vasily Constantinescu to British Columbia. Uh, it doesn't surprise me that she left Caldwell, I suppose. Um, it still would have been unusual for those days, but it does sound difficult, and the situation sounds difficult. I, I began by having some hard feelings, of course, uh, about her abandoning her children. Um, and I still have some, but at the same time, if you are the oldest daughter of 11 children, you've probably been taking care of children since you were strong enough to hold one. She may have left the frying pan for the fire in her first attempt um, and then tried again in British Columbia. I hope that they all found some sort of peace. I will leave you now with uh, a look at what Caldwell Harper's letter to his aunt was written on which is a piece of paper that indicates how the metric system works. I am no gentleman, not I, no star bedizened thing. My father's filched no dignity by fawning on a king. I am no gentleman, not I, no, no, no. Our stout John Knox was none, and why should I be so?